Here's what's coming up on March Conversations with Archbishop Joseph Kurtz. The Archbishop talks about the resignation of Pope Benedict, and the election of his successor. The Archbishop discusses the creed and how it relates to the journey of Holy Week. Special guest Father Bill Hammer, president of the Priest Council, talks with Archbishop Kurtz about the new evangelization and how it can be realized in parish life. The conversations for March start right now. Welcome to Conversations for the month of March. Good to have you along. Archbishop, it's good to see you. March is a busy month. As usual, Reed, uh, you're absolutely right. Here we are in Lent already. Indeed, in addition to spring and basketball. Exactly. First of all, we have a lot to talk about. We'll start with the resignation of the Pope. Uh, a what surprise What a surprise. There. What a surprise. Uh, uh, of course, uh, earlier in, in February, uh, I think all the world, and I was part of that, was very surprised with the decision of our Holy Father. Uh, it was a real act of humility, though, wasn't it? And in fact, uh, even that first day, as I began to reflect upon it, I became less and less surprised and less aware. You know, I, I thought back, our Holy Father, when he was elected, his first message was, I am a humble a worker in the vineyard of the Lord. And how typical for him to say, I'm 85 years old, I'm approaching 86, he's in good mind and spirit, but, but the demands uh, of, uh, of serving, as he says, the patrine ministry are so great that naturally uh, he wanted to step aside and allow uh, the, a, a new pope to be elected. I found it interesting that he didn't feel himself bound by the shackles of history. He wasn't well, afraid to rewrite 600 well, years. Well, and of course he, he knows that, that this was not uh, anything that is, uh, he's, in a sense he gave, he gave hints of it, mm -hmm. let's just he say did. before. So, uh, but boy, uh, uh, do I love uh, Pope Benedict and, and of course we're praying that we'll have uh, someone of the same uh, stature well, to he lead had, us. He had quite, during his papacy, he had quite an impact on this archdiocese. Well, he did. Well, you remember uh, eight years as the Holy Father. It was during those eight years that uh, Archbishop Kelly uh, retired and, re and resigned from his, his uh, responsibilities. And uh, I was grateful to be appointed his successor. So it was Pope Benedict who made that decision. The next year, Reed, we were all gathered, remember in 2008, and of course we had many bicentennial celebrations, but who's going to forget when we all gathered at Yankee Stadium? I think it was, uh, it was in, in a sense, I think the last non-ball game event that occurred in the old Yankee Stadium and our Holy Father coming to the United States. So that was great. 09 and 011 were we graced when two of our own priests, now Bishop Medley appointed Bishop of Owensboro and Bishop Chuck Thompson appointed Bishop of Evansville in Indiana. They were two of our own priests of the presbyterate appointed as bishops. So we, we have many, many things to be grateful for in the archdiocese. Now you met the Pope several times. I did. What impressed you about it? Oh, I, I did. Well, I, I can remember in 04, December of 04, we were on Ad Limian. Of course, blessed John Paul II was just in his, what, what turned out to be the last months of his life. Uh, at that time, this was Cardinal Ratzinger, he was the prefect for the Congregation for Doctrine of the Faith. And he always a scholar, but most especially someone with a great pastoral heart, a gentleness, uh, a, a desire to live Christ. Uh, so in many ways, the thing that I saw, and I saw it again in, in Cologne, Germany for the 20th World Youth Day, that was in 2005. Uh, I was impressed. I thought, well, this was his first big, big public appearance after he was elected. And I thought, well, we're all thinking, is he going to be like John Paul II, et cetera? He, he was his own man, yes. and that has shown itself. What, what a gifted, gifted uh, 
servant of the Lord, huh? Now, we expect that we'll probably have a new pope before the end of this month. I think so. Of course, the conclave uh, will begin very, very shortly, and, uh, and the cardinals gathered. We're hoping that by Easter uh, we will have uh, the election, the news of the election of a new pope and our ability to welcome him. Well, Archbishop, will certainly be waiting and praying as the month goes on. If you'd like to see the press conference the Archbishop held in its entirety after the resignation of the Pope, go to our website. It's available on demand anytime you want it, archlu.org slash Benedict. Archbishop, uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the Holy Father's uh, Lenten message. Yeah. I think it's uh, very appropriate for this year of faith focused on uh, between faith and charity. Yeah, it is. And well, you remember, uh, of course, the, the tripod that we've talked about before about Lent. If you want to make a good Lent, uh, begin with prayer, begin with fasting, and begin with works of charity. Well, this uh, time, the focus is on charity, but it's an interesting twist. I don't think our Holy Father has ever written a letter that he doesn't have some interesting twist. So I would, I hope we'll be able to uh, get the reference uh, for his letter up on our on our screen so that people who are viewing have a chance to go right to the site and, and read the whole letter. But let me give you just a little summary. He says, before you begin to do works of charity, first be aware of how gracious and charitable God is for you. You know, in the Gospels, Jesus often says it's the person who is forgiven the most. That person is the one that loves the most. So the more we're aware of the working of God's presence in our life, that's the gift of faith, that we then overflow into gifts of charity. So much of what we uh, talk about here, uh, our faith isn't about theories or ideas. It's about a fundamental relationship of love. It is. It is. And, and it's, a, it's a relationship of love that is deepened in prayer, in fasting, but also that overflows and shows itself in action. I was looking for a quote, and I'll, I'll find it eventually, but not before the end of this program. And it was one of the sermons that uh, St. Augustine gave at one time. And he said... In, in encouraging people in Lent, he said, enjoy the meal that someone else is now eating because of your generosity. I mean, usually we say, well, I'm going to enjoy the meal I'm sitting down to eat. But he's saying out of almsgiving, you are giving a meal for someone in need to eat. Enjoy that. In other words, put yourself in the place of someone in need. And that's exactly what, uh, what our Holy Father's talking about. What does the, uh, the Holy Father say about the, the practical aspects of the question that, that we've been debating for centuries and centuries, and that is uh, between faith and works? Yeah, as if we make a choice, huh? Right. Well, the two, the two extremes are what we're, we're wanting to avoid. The one would be what's called almost a fideism, which means... Uh, I'm going to privately believe, but it will have no effect on the way I treat people. Not, not good. No. The other is what we might call a moral activism in which we never pray, we never think of God's presence, and it's all about me helping someone else. And that becomes uh, an ego trip or, and often, uh, a recipe for quick burnout. So the two extremes of... Uh, Fideism, which says uh, it's private and I don't have to worry about what I, I do for others, versus a moral activism devoid of faith, they're the two extremes to avoid. I think what our Holy Father is saying is make a practical plan, but understand that without God's grace, we will all fail. I, I'll tell you what I do, by the way, and, and I think it'd be exciting for our, our listeners to consider doing, is I create a budget at the beginning of Lent and say, now how much can I afford to give to someone else? And I mean financially. And then I have the greatest time during that month and, or so, these weeks of Lent, uncovering how I'm going to spend this money. I know I'm going to, I've already committed that I'm going to give so much and I try to, to work around tithing, a, a tenth of, of, of what I receive, if at least that much. And I think that's within range of people. Uh, I've already come up with a, a couple of things. I, I had a wonderful occasion where uh, 
I was part of a, a program put on by people who have Down syndrome called Angels in Disguise, and I've already given some money, and I'm going to give some more of this, this Lent. Uh, I also met a wonderful person, actually, she's a, a daughter of of the diocese, and and uh, she grew up here. Uh, Laura Dills was honored last year at our salute for Catholic education, and uh, she is the Catholic Relief Service's main person serving people in Madagascar. And because it's personal in both of these cases, whatever gift I'm able to give uh, gives me a chance to be joined to someone else who concretely is being helped. I hope that every one of our listeners in their own prayer and fasting will consider budgeting some amount that they will be able to share with others. Good idea for Lynn. Yeah, I, I think so. Thank you so much. Right now we take a break, but conversations continues for the month of March and we'll be back with more. <laughs> 